Watch this now. By whom we have received what? Grace and apostleship. Lift up your hand and say that. Thank you for the grace that I receive. An apostleship. For obedient to faith among all nations for his name. Did you see that? We have received apostleship. Paul said, I am a servant of God. Have been declared an apostle. You see? So you too have been given an apostleship. What is the reason of the reason that you've given the apostleship? So you can declare the gospel. Hallelujah. You say, for the obedience of what? Faith. What faith are we talking about? The faith that is in Christ Jesus. Among all nations for his name. Whose name? Jesus. We need to be very specific. When you are preaching the gospel, when we are talking about the gospel, it's no other name. It's the name of Christ. That's it. Let's go down to verse 9. Let's jump down to verse 9. I'll take it from verse 6. Shalom. It's okay. Go to verse 6. We, we take it. We take it to verse 6. Among whom ye also are called of Jesus Christ. Are you called of Jesus Christ? If you are called of Jesus Christ, so this belongs to you. But if you have not yet received Christ in your heart, if Jesus is not your Lord and personal Savior, you can be part of this family today. But if you have believed in Him and received Him, among whom you also are called of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you because I'm called of Jesus Christ. Thank you because I am called of Jesus Christ. I didn't call myself, but He called me. Did you see that? You didn't call yourself, but He called you. He called you how? Through faith that you had in Him that is in grace. We are saved by grace, through faith, not of our works, least any man should boast. So you, it's because of your faith, you had a faith, you believed in something, and the grace called you. Hallelujah. Mm. Verse 7. To all that is in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from our God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. You see? He was messaging, was re sending a letter to Rome and was telling all the brothers in, in, in Rome and said, all of you are already saved. Grace to you and peace. Tell, tell yourself, say, thank you for this grace and peace that I received that is in Christ Jesus. Yes, this is, this, is the, this is the gospel. This is confession that we live in. Go down to verse 8. We are going to focus on this gospel. That's what we're going to talk about. And then that's it. First, I thank God, God through Jesus Christ, for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Did you see that? Is your faith spoken? Is your faith spoken throughout the whole world? Is your faith spoken throughout the whole world? He says, first, I thank my God, through God, through Jesus Christ, for you all, that your faith is spoken throughout the whole world. Father, thank you because this gospel, and my faith is spoken throughout the whole world. Amen. Verse 9. Jesus. For God is my, let's read it together. God is my witness. witness. Whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. How do we serve God? From where? We serve God from our spirit. And our spirit that serves God, he's serving God through what? The gospel. You cannot serve God in your spirit. You serve God in your spirit through the gospel. Even if you are serving God, it must be in the gospel. Otherwise, you are serving God in vain. So whenever we serve God, it must be in the gospel of who? His son. So the Bible made it very specific. It's, um, we're just showing you from verse 1 all the way. He does it, the gospel is centered about Jesus Christ. Is Jesus, 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 Jesus. Is Jesus, 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 Jesus. Nothing more than Jesus. That's what the gospel is. It's very profound. 
So if you're looking at the Old Testament, every time you read the Old Testament, who do you find? Jesus. If you don't find Jesus, look for the promise there. When you find the promise, look for the gospel. When you look for the gospel, look for Jesus Christ. Because in the Old Testament, there was a promise. And in the promise is the gospel. And the gospel is who? Jesus Christ. Let's go back to verse 1 again. What it says. Paul. Who says Paul. A servant. And, and a servant. You need to declare yourself as a servant. Yes. You need to declare yourself that you are a servant of God. You are a servant of God. He says Paul. A servant of Jesus Christ. Did you see that? Called to be the, an apostle. Separated unto the gospel of God. Put yourself in that place. Declare your name. Say, print, declare your name. Say, put your name there. Say, I said, Prince, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Put your name there. That's who you are. That's who you are. You have been separated for the gospel of God. The grace is released upon you. There's peace upon your life. For the gospel of God. Amen. You are the gospel of Christ. You are the ep episode of Christ. So wherever you go. You begin to declare with boldness. About Jesus Christ. The world. The, the world is shaking. Everywhere is shaking. But you tell them that Jesus is alive. Amen. Tell them Jesus came. He died. And he was resurrected. And he's alive. He's the good news. Jesus is to be preached to the poor. He's to be preached to the rich. He's to be preached to the young. He's to be preached to the old. Jesus is the message. Mm -hmm. Go down to verse 15. Or go to, we read 9, go to 10. Go to 10. And then we'll come to 15. Making requests, if by any means, now that at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. Verse 11. For I long to see you that I may impact unto you some spiritual gifts. So what, are, what am I doing to you today now? I'm impacting into you spiritual gift. <coughs> That's what I'm doing to you right now. As I'm ministering to you now, by the grace of God, I'm impacting into you spiritual gift to the end so that you may be established. Because what I'm doing to you right now, I'm showing you the gospel and the gospel is establishing you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because without you being established, you will not be able to run the race. Without you being impacted, you will not be able to know the place that you belong. But right now, by the grace of God and the help and the wisdom of God, I'm impacting you spiritual gift. How? Because that spiritual gift is the gospel of Christ Jesus. Amen. May you be impacted today as you receive this word. You'll be impacted spiritually in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Go down to verse 12. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both you and me. When you are established, do you know what happened to me? You and I becomes comforted. You and I, it becomes beneficial. It becomes a mutual, a mutual faith. Your faith is established, my faith is established, and we grow together. Because we are one body, even though we are separated parts. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So receive this impartation today. Mm. Receive this impartation that is centered in Christ Jesus. Mm. That is centered in Christ Jesus. Mm. Verse 13. Mm. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren. That oftentimes I propose to come unto you, but let it not that I might have some fruit among you, also even as among other Gentiles. Verse 14. Everybody focus now and leave everything. Verse 14. I am debtor both to the Greek and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. Verse 15.
So as much as a need is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Are you ready to preach the gospel? Are you ready to preach the gospel? Yes. That question is for you now. Are you ready to preach the gospel? Because the reason of your separation, the reason of setting you apart, the reason of you receiving it is so you can be ready to preach what? The gospel. The question I have for you today, are you ready to preach the gospel? Are you ready? Will you just hear this gospel and then just keep it to yourself? Or are you actually ready to preach the gospel? You can change your mentality today. You can change your mindset today. You can change your mindset. There are people that have not heard the gospel that needs to hear it through you. They've not heard the gospel. How would they hear if no one tell them? How would they go if nobody send them? You say, well, somebody else should tell. It's in your responsibility to preach the gospel. Lift up your hand and say, Father, I have received that grace long ago. I received boldness. I received courage to preach the gospel. I received courage to talk about the gospel to those that have not heard it without fear, without panic in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid. Preach the gospel. Don't be afraid what will happen. God is in charge of the signs. God is in charge of the miracles. Your responsibility is just to preach. Peter and the apostles, they preached the gospel. And the Bible says signs follow the gospel. Because the gospel is the power unto salvation. Verse 16. For I am not ashamed. Tell, speak to yourself. Speak to yourself continually. Tell yourself, I am not ashamed. Shame, you are not belonging to me. Shame is not my portion. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed of the, for it's the power of God unto salvation. For everyone that believes to the Jewish first and also to the Greek, I'm not ashamed, Lord. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because I'm proud because it's the gospel that won me. It's the gospel that made me who I am today. It's the gospel that gave me boldness. It's the gospel that put me here so I will not be ashamed of this gospel. Amen. Are you ashamed of the gospel? It's a question that is, is personal to you. Are you ashamed of this gospel? Do you want people to know that you believe in Jesus Christ or you are hiding it? Are you ashamed of the gospel? Are you proud of Jesus Christ? Can you be bold and declare your faith? Do you know that those people that you are ashamed of they actually want to see your boldness so that they can turn from their own way. So that they can turn from their own belief and believe in that Christ. But when you are not bold, they themselves, they back out. But when you are bold of the gospel and you are not ashamed of the gospel, what happens? People begin to see your boldness and they say there's something that is making this person to be bold and it's the gospel of Christ and it begins to draw them closer. Amen. Are you ashamed? I'm not talking about those people that I'm not talking about those people who say it. I'm not talking about those people that 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 is afraid of the you come into a situation and then you are so you are so you are so afraid. He knows your heart, he knows your mind. Be bold of him. Be proud of Jesus Christ. Because the gospel is the power <coughs> unto salvation. Without the gospel, there is no salvation. Without the gospel, there is no power. Without the gospel, there is no salvation. Without the gospel, there is no power. Romans 16, 25. Romans 16, 25. We want to talk about this power. <coughs> 